don't need you telling me what to do. Um, but it turned out she was right. You know, she, um, she also kept sending me little articles and stuff that talked about how writing is a therapeutic method. And, uh, I suppose I could liken it to popping, you know, an adult zit. There was like all this buildup and this buildup and this buildup. And you finally, you know, pop the zit and it goes goosh everywhere. And that's kind of what it's like. It was like all of this buildup. So. Awesome. Okay. Um, what was my other question? We're kind of developing like, our own process in writing. It's a course, so I've tried to give them some tips of like when you don't know what you need to say, but you know you need to start writing something. Like one of the techniques is to just write three sentences and, and not let yourself um, stop writing, like set a timer. What's your process like when you go to write? Um, by the way, could you just hit the record button? Yeah, you get a yeah. oh, okay, cool. Um, my process is I just try to get myself out of the way as much as possible. I don't edit when I sit down to write whatever is gurgling forth, I let it roll. So that would be my, my piece of advice. I would just say, um, go with it, you know, go with it as much as possible because you have to trust what's coming up. What's coming up is what's meant to be released. Um, when you're like going from the, okay, I've written to, I'm going to upload it to this medium, which is, can you talk a little bit about what that um, format is and, and the opportunity sure. to come from that? Um, you know, I was, uh, I was in Vancouver about a month ago. I was visiting a friend of mine who's a, world-renowned copywriter and he and I was talking about how I you know wanted to publish my blog and get my website up and he's like you just just published a medium and I was like what's medium and he's like it's the 256 most popular website in the world just do medium trust me you're gonna have way more uh readers on that format than if you were just to publish on your own and I mean he was more than more than right it's completely mushroomed it just it keeps growing and growing. Um, it's such a cool format. And um, you just, you know, there's nothing like um, writing in, and, and then almost in real time, you know, getting it. Social media is like this live organism that provides immediate feedback. So it's pretty cool to be able to share in an open, honest format and get that feedback you know so you write something and then you go to like upload it and you don't edit it from there you oh no I definitely edit I mean you know it some you know when I when I when pieces kind of come out when I start writing I get it out I don't edit the first draft I try to just get it all out there and then I go back and I read it several times at least probably more like 10 or 20 um to refine and you know, try to get my punctuation correct and stuff. <laughs> yeah, corrected me on a few things. Stuff. I'll save you some time on the grammar editing. But as far as like word choice and like clarity of what you're trying to communicate, um, how critical are you in what you've written? Or is it more just about reading it for like clarity of the reader? Of Is this, are they going to understand what I was saying? Do you understand the question? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think that that part comes pretty naturally for me. It's again, it's such an exercise in trust. You know, we, we have to trust ourselves as writers. We have to trust that what's coming out is clear and makes sense. And then it's always a good idea to run it by someone else. You know, I, it, I have gotten into the habit of before I hit the publish button, I send it to one of my trusted associates and if they're like well you might need to write one more or even let my daughter read it and she'll tell me um you know you need one more sentence here or can you explain this thought a little bit more um as much as something makes sense in our own mind of course you know having that mirror there is often uh, a helpful reflection do you have any um writing quirks 
I notice <laughs> sometimes I'm sitting like in bed right next to my daughter and I'm writing and I start doing these like motions with my hands where I'm like, I'm trying to come up with a word. And I just like, I'm like doing this. And she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm trying to think of a word and it, it helps, you know, it's like, uh, I think it was Anthony Robbins who said emotion is created by motion. So we, you know, emotion start is created to, by motion. Emotion is created by motion, you know, so that's, I think that's that, one like of my physical moving to get the brain moving kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So what is some like, Bennett, what have, what's happened since you started publishing either just for yourself? I know you've talked about how it's been a good release. So you've kind of hit on that, but as far as like contacts and it's mushrooming and your readership is going up, but what are some like surprising opportunities that are doors that are opening from this? I mean, even just being able to chat with you guys this morning is a, such an honor. You know, thank you for, for inviting me to share with your classroom. Uh, it wasn't, it feels like it wasn't that long ago that I was in high school. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about um, a creative writing class I took in high school. Um, but that's just it, is that I am experiencing myself as a more whole, well-rounded human being as a result of simply hitting enter, you know, by, by, by putting myself out there and showing up in the world and not hiding who I am, something's happening. It's like, it's like this brilliant process that is um, bigger than me. And it's like surrendering to that process in some way, you know, uh, if I could do anything differently, I would go back to high school and start being more of who I really am then. You know, I don't know if it just wasn't possible for me um, because we get so obsessed with perfection because we care so much about what other people think. And I am, you know, almost 40. And so I don't give much of a beep anymore about what others think. <laughs> But if I could go back then, I mean, you guys have so much um, in you. You have so much wisdom. You have so much humor. You have so much insight. And the world wants to hear from you. They, they, they want to hear your voice, you know, and your voice is special and unique because of your age and because you're not, you know, you're not jaded yet. Your perspective on the world is fresh and we need to hear your voice because like, you know, as, as we age, we just, we tend to get a little more shut down. We tend to get a little more jaded and really it's, it's, it's the young people who are going to change the world. It always has been and always will be. Um, okay. I'm jumping around a little bit, but as far as influencing you as a writer, who were some big authors or one or two like books that just kind of opened your mind in a different way? About writing specifically, though. About writing specifically. Oh, this is funny. I mean, for some reason, I like the the old drunk alcoholics like Charles Bukowski and uh, Ernest Hemingway. They were uh, they were big because they didn't edit. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, they were very plain. Um, Charles Bukowski's book Women is one of the funniest. I've never laughed so hard from from reading a book. Um, so I suppose it would be that. And then of course there's like Elizabeth Gilbert's, you know, eat, pray, love. Uh, people have told me that I kind of write like her. Um, but she was also, you know, pretty transparent about her personal journey. And, um, I don't know, it seems like that's almost a trend now or something, particularly with the Harvey Weinstein whole me too thing, you know, people are, people are coming out of the closet in all kinds of different ways and sharing in an open, vulnerable format. So you kids should do it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you deal with the criticism? I mean, not everybody's going to be your audience necessarily. And then beyond that, even if they are, um, how do you, especially if it's like a certain day where you're just not feeling as confident, how do you read you it? Know, I was, and let it go. 
I was in the grocery store. I've only had one super negative uh, comment, actually, in all of it, which is kind of surprising. I was in the grocery store with my daughter, and I, like, had my, my Medium app open on my phone while we were waiting in line. I was flipping through, and someone, like, completely laid into me. It was uh, He was responding to he or she was responding to one of my articles that I had written about dating, and I had somehow I went out with this guy, and I just wasn't that into him. He didn't have that much game and he wasn't very interesting. And they just laid into me. And you know, for a second, my stomach dropped and I was like, oh my God. And I let my daughter read it and she was like, oh my God. And then the very next comment was something uber positive. And her and I were like, well, you know, you, know, you win some, you lose some. What are you going to do? I mean, yeah. I could you know, I could lose sleep over this random person on the internet who won't even put their, who's completely bashing me, but won't even attach their name, you know, to, um, their criticism. Or I could just like keep doing my thing. Um, so if you could go back, like you've talked a little bit about that, but you know, your subject matter doesn't hide the whole struggle with the alcohol. Um, and your feelings of being uncomfortable and we kind of started uh our bell ringer today was an article where they had to then write like their own scenario of the time that they were uncomfortable and I didn't force them to do in first person so it could have been totally fabricated made up but um how do you think alcoholism or your struggle with that has played into your writing and um has it almost in an indirect way given you more source for story Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the negative becomes the fuel and the fodder for all of this, all of this material. Uh, I, I don't think when I was younger, I couldn't have imagined um, coming clean and being open about these personal struggles. You know, I had so much, uh, so much shame around them. And it was like this thing that I was trying to like manage and hide. And, and keep away from the world. Um, and somehow, I mean, it's just been interesting. Somehow that has become like the very thing that I'm writing about. I just, I, I, you know, I think that there's a real power and strength when we're able to take the thing that was the most negative and the most oppressive and the most harrowing and the thing that we couldn't even imagine and, and, make that into our thing, into our, into our gift for the world. You know, um, it's taken me a long time and many, many years, um, of unraveling certain things that, you know, I experienced as a teenager or as a child that I just couldn't talk about. And I just wonder, you know, what would it have been like if I could have started talking about that stuff sooner? Like the thing that you just can't mention and the dis the thing that's so uncomfortable and so like that gives you a knot in your stomach. Like that's the thing you got to write about. Like, because you know, you don't want to be almost 40 years old and still carrying that stuff around with you. There's a, a real freedom and, and happiness that's like on the other side of that shame and embarrassment. Do you think the converse then is true that, um, you can be an amazing storyteller or writer without having had to live like some painful experiences or. I'm sure I just wasn't one of those people. I mean, I, I'm sure there are, I, I would think so. I mean, I think that suffering forces us out of unconsciousness. Can you explain what you mean by that? Uh, well, um, suffering, you know, it, it kind of like chisels us, it shapes us and it causes us to, you know, if we experience rejection from our peers and I happened to experience a lot of that for some reason, um, it causes us to wake up somehow, you know, it causes us to, it causes our consciousness to, to shift and to transform, you know, we always think that we want to, for example, protect our children and make sure, you know, that they're not bullied or whatever. And yet somehow 
we get to know ourselves through that alienation and rejection, you know, through that struggle. That's how we become better human beings, really. Okay, I'm going to open it up to them to see if they have any questions. Um, and then I may follow up with one more. Okay, hey guys, any questions? We're having video problems. Okay, wait, there you are. Any questions about the process, about anything in their article that you read? Y'all are not this quiet. <laughs> Okay, well, my question was kind of about your subject matter with the alcohol. What was your drinking like when you were in high school and like those early, your early experiences with substance? Um, all I heard was what was my drinking like in high school? And your early experience with substance. Okay. Well, don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> fuck up your life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I started drinking actually my senior year. I started, I thought it was so cool. Um, my best friend, um, lived right up the street from me and we used to get in his truck and drive around his property and we started drinking every day, um, in high school and, you know, um, I, I, I think I felt invincible. I was in denial about the fact that it had a huge effect on my brain and my brain chemistry and the formation of my brain was still forming. I, if and only I could go back and do that differently, you know, same with college. Like I spent my entire um, college career living it up and I just, I just wonder, you know, in the parallel universe, like what my life would be like if I had, um, if I had stuck it out, if I had studied and if I had taken my career and my life, um, I would have had a very different path. I would have saved myself a lot of suffering, I guess. But like Eminem said, I guess I had to go to that place to get to here. Right. <laughs> you just dropped an Eminem quote. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Any last thoughts, words? You know, I did want to share with you guys about um, a class that I had in high school. With the, it was a creative writing class, and one exercise we did that I that stuck with me to this day. I still have the notes from it. We did this thing called the hot seat, and each person in the class would take a turn and go up to the front of the room, and the rest of the class would have an opportunity to ask that person unedited anything that they wanted to ask them there was basically you know no no <laughs> rules or limitations their faces right now they're like not <laughs> give miss crowder this idea <laughs> um but, you know, we, we all we all want to know how we occur to other people and sometimes we can't really see that it's like it's like this blind spot that we have um and the other part of the exercise was that the the other kids in the class wrote down um three like thoughts or ideas or impressions that they had of us they just gave and then they put it in a note and they handed it to us and they gave we gave each other honest feedback and honest reflection of what we thought about the other person i still have i still have those notes um, so I just wanted to share that with you as something that, that stuck with me. You know, we're all on this journey of self-knowledge. Uh, that was the name of the class. <laughs> of self-knowledge together. And um, we really need each other to, to help us along our way. So I just wanted to invite you to do that. Mm, challenge accepted. <laughs> uh -huh. sure. yeah, um, sure. Okay, so they, what are, they, they are liking this idea. And the ones that aren't, I'd... I don't know. So, like, if, if you hadn't been excited, would the teacher have made you do it? Do you know what I mean? Or yeah, we all participate. I mean, you just you just show up at some point, you know? It's like, it's you just participate. It's like, show up to your life or, or miss out. You know, you're just missing out on an opportunity. I guess, obviously, I'm going to force them into the hot seat. <laughs> but, hey. Give them a warm seat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to send thank you, you Natalie. Um, comments, thoughts as a response of after they read your article. Um, okay. And I Thank thought you. the Mrs. recent one, yeah, <laughs> Mrs. Crowder, that's it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys.